So how can we add some AI to a Unity environment in just a few minutes? In a previous video, I showed how to make an animated robot character walk through a city controlled by the keyboard. And I promised the next step would be to add AI. And then in a subsequent video, I showed several options for human characters to replace the robot. The section of the Unity scripting API called Unity Engine AI is all about pathfinding and navigation, and that's where we will start. Unity's navigation system is commonly called the nav mesh system because a mesh is created over the environment where characters, cars, or any game objects can travel. By combining nav mesh with animation, we can have characters that roam through the city on their own instead of being controlled by the player. NavMesh creates a static data structure over the environment for pathfinding to destinations. In this context, the human character is called an agent, which is starting to sound more like AI. But NavMesh also provides small dynamic adjustments to avoid collisions with moving obstacles or other agents. NavMesh uses the A-star algorithm for calculating least cost paths. There's lots of information easily available about A-star, and I'm not going to repeat that information here. Likewise, if you look at YouTube for videos about Unity NavMesh, there are already a bunch of good ones, and I don't want to repeat what has already been done. For example, you might want to check out this nice one from Brackies. However, I do think the existing videos miss something important. They all focus on sort of toy examples in simple scenes that just include some simple geometrical shapes. There are some considerations when adding a nav mesh to a more realistic environment. And there are lots of great environments in the Unity Asset Store. Nav mesh with certain tricks for how it's used can enable AI, or at least some form of AI, to be easily added, added to them. If this video is interesting or helpful to you, please do like it and consider subscribing to this channel. That feedback helps me to know that these videos are useful. I'm going to work with the same Polygon City Pack that I used before. I like this one both because it looks good and it has a lot of different kinds of areas. We can apply different costs to different area types. So for example, we can set up the navigation such that characters prefer to stay on sidewalks and crosswalks and staircases are okay, but that they are more reluctant to cross roads where there, you know, where there isn't a crosswalk and they don't want to walk on the grass but it is permissible for them to walk on roads and grass if there's no other path to a destination. We could also specify, for example, that walking on water is absolutely impossible. And we could even make cars into AIs and specify that cars can only travel on roads and go over crosswalks, but that, that they absolutely cannot go on sidewalks or staircases or water. So let's take a look at our city. Again, there is no AI here yet. Let's just take a walk and see what kinds of areas we have. We're walking on a road, but there are also sidewalks. There are steps leading up to doors. Over here, there is a park with a path and grass. Again, by using Unity Nav Mesh, we can assign different costs to each of these areas so if walking on grass is expensive, the pathfinding will only have the character traverse the grass if there is no other way to get to a destination. So let's open the navigation window and look at the list of areas. By default, Unity defines areas called walkable, not walkable, and jump. Based on this environment, let's add areas that are more specific, including sidewalk, road, 
crossing path, grass, and stairs. We need to define the relative cost of traversing these areas. Let's say sidewalk has the least cost for walking on it. A crossing path or stairs are more expensive, whereas a road and grass have the highest cost. Let's make that even higher. We need to set some objects as navigation static, including the surfaces that our characters will walk on and objects such as buildings that will be obstacles. The quickest approach is to define everything in the city as navigation static. That may be overkill, because small objects that would not affect navigation, like small plants on the ground and objects that are high above ground level, like chimneys on top of buildings, don't really need to be navigation static. If I wanted to spend more time, I could be more selective about what to make navigation static, although I don't think there's a big penalty to setting this for the entire city. Next, we need to assign the individual objects that our characters might walk on to the different navigation areas. I'm going to move the hierarchy window closer to the navigation window so it's easier to look at them together. Luckily, there are good naming conventions, so we can select groups of similar objects based on their name. So, for example, I type the word sidewalk, choose all the sidewalk objects, and set those to be part of the sidewalk area for navigation. I do the same for road objects. Note that crossings are called road crossings, so I'm leaving those for later. Then I will assign the road crossing objects then the path objects, then the grass objects, then the objects with stairs. That was a quick way to assign lots of objects to be organized as the correct navigation areas. Of course, we could spend more time to make sure they are correct one by one, but for now, this seems very reasonable. We then go into Bake Settings, which specify some parameters of the nav mesh. The only thing I'm going to change right now is to turn on a Height Mesh, which is useful for stairs. I then click on Bake and the nav mesh gets generated, which takes a few minutes. We can see the nav mesh now in the scene view, color-coded by area type. So we have all of this green road area and pink sidewalk area. If we adjust our view, we can see these gray grass areas and light green paths. The stairs are colored with a different shade of green. If we display the height mesh, we can see the walkable surface on each step. If we zoom way out, we see that some objects that we did not adjust are defined as the default blue walkable area, including the tops of buildings and the surrounding water. I'm going to select all the water tiles, which all have ocean in the name, and set those instead to be not walkable.
So all of that took just a few minutes and we've created a pretty good mesh on top of our city that maps out where it is relatively easy to walk, like sidewalks, where it is more expensive to walk, like on roads, and where it is impossible to walk, which is on the ocean. Now we need to create an agent that can move through the city. As a simple way to get started, we simply create a cylinder. And then add a nav mesh agent component. A nav mesh agent already knows how to perform the A star algorithm without us having to do anything more. I'm giving a red material to the cylinder just to make it easier to see. The one thing we need to tell the nav mesh agent is where we want it to go. An easy way to test this is to copy a C sharp script called move to click point that is provided in the Unity manual. We copy that into a file. And assign it to our agent. Now we try running. If we click on a point, our nav mesh agent figures out a path to get to that point and moves there. Let's try something a little more complicated. We can zoom out. and also disable our camera following script so the camera just stays in its initial location. So if we click on the sidewalk over here, the agent moves there, but staying on the sidewalk as much as possible while minimizing how much it uses the road because moving on the road is more expensive. Here's another example where the agent has a more distant destination, but still stays on the sidewalk as much as possible. Note the crossing is more expensive than the sidewalk, but less expensive than the road. So now we have a cylinder that can do some AI navigation. And we have our human character that I can control using the keyboard. All I have to do is add the AI to the human character, right? So I move the nav mesh agent component and the move to click point script to the human. Will that work? No, not really. The reason is that Unity's navigation system and animation system both try to change the position of the character. If that isn't orchestrated carefully, the result can be a race condition. But don't worry, there is a solution, and I will show how to make an autonomous walking human character in the next video. So I hope you see that adding Unity's AI navigation to even a fairly complex environment is pretty easy. 
When I've looked at forums and online discussions, I've seen some comments where people have judged Unity's built-in nav mesh system to sometimes be not good enough, and some game developers have instead implemented their own solution for navigation and pathfinding. I would say that if you work at a big enough organization, that you have a team of developers, and a few people could spend the time to implement something better than Unity's nav mesh, then more power to you, and you're probably not watching this video. For small teams and individual developers, Unity's nav mesh is a great way to easily start adding some AI capabilities. As I said, in the next video, I will show how to make this work with a human character instead of just a cylinder. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please do consider liking and subscribing.